Al Sharpton uh, interviewed uh, Boris Epstein. He's uh, one of uh, D Donald Trump's uh, main uh, surrogates and works uh, directly in his campaign. Mr. Epstein, like the rest of uh, Trump's surrogates, when questioned and asked for specifics, never can seem to come up with any. Uh, Mr. Sharpton asked him specifically what black businesses had Mr. Trump actually supported. And Mr. Epstein couldn't come up with any because Trump hasn't supported any black businesses. When Al asked him about uh, the makeup of his uh, organization and what black executives work uh, for him in high positions, Mr. Epstein uh, came up with a name, but then uh, Mr. Sharpton told him the person that he came up with doesn't work for Donald Trump. He works for Donald Trump's son. And then Mr. Epstein tried to cover by saying, well, he's part of the organization. That's a, that's a bunch of bullshit. Donald Trump hasn't done jack shit in the 30 plus years that uh, he's uh, been building his businesses uh, around the world and specifically in New York. And there's nothing that these guys can do to go back and recreate history. Here's the interview that uh, Al Sharpton did uh, with the Boris Epstein. I'm Al Sharpton. We start this morning with a question. What is Donald Trump up to? He's entering his first full week with a new campaign team. He's finally out with his first political ad of the general election. And after a year of controversial rhetoric, he's finally apologizing. Kind of. Sometimes, in the heat of debate and speaking on a multitude of issues, you don't choose the right words or you say the wrong thing. I have done that. Believe it or not, I regret it, and I do regret it, particularly where it may have caused personal pain. But Trump didn't name a single specific thing he regrets. And his new campaign team is widely expected to let Trump be Trump instead of reining him in. Now even some conservatives are wondering, what is his goal? One GOP senator is wondering if Trump is already in post-election mode, preparing to, quote, monetize a brand by launching a cable network. This past week, a Republican congressman speculated that Trump is trying to lose the election. I have no hard proof uh, for my theory, but I think the relevant question is, uh, do people actually think that Donald Trump is trying to win? It may be nothing, but is this the conduct of someone who is trying to win? I just, I don't see it. Even Rush Limbaugh is bashing Trump's strategy of bashing the media. Now you see what happens when you go after the media. It doesn't work. No matter what a bunch of slavish pro-Democrat creeps they are, it never works going after them. If you are the candidate, it makes you look small. For Trump, the national polls are brutal. Clinton ahead in all of them. And for those thinking that this Trump reboot might be the one that sticks, here's what he said at the start of his big pivot. I am who I am. It's me. I don't want to change. Everyone talks about, oh, well, you're going to pivot. You're going to, I don't want to pivot. I mean, you have to be you. If you start pivoting, you're not being honest with people. I'm joined now by Boris Epstein, senior advisor to the Trump campaign and former aide to the mccain Palin campaign. First of all, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Boris, we saw Donald Trump talk this week about uh, he had some regrets. Does that mean we're going to see a kinder, gentler Trump? I mean, will he apologize specifically for some of his controversial statements? You know, that was a very personal 
speech by him, and those were personal statements saying that if over the last year, a very brutal, tough campaign, he said things that have hurt people, he regrets that. But now, he and the campaign are looking forward. Look, but, but wouldn't message. it have been more effective if he stated what exactly he was sorry for and apologized? I mean, no, I know it would have been a very long speech because a lot of people were, uh, he's had very well. It would have been a long speech because that's not the point of the speech. The point of the speech was to talk about national security and law and order and the economy. It was a speech that pulled this week together, a strong week by the campaign that started with a speech about defeating ISIS on Monday, went to law and order on Tuesday, and then pulled it all together yesterday. So that wasn't the point of the speech. That was a part of the speech. But as you, I'm sure you, when you watched it, it was a long speech that was focused on the message of the economy and national security, but also on the failures of Hillary Clinton. All right, well, talking about Hillary Clinton in the spirit of... Uh of regrets. Uh, Katrina Pearson was on uh, this uh, network this week and said that Hillary Clinton had a rare brain disease. Do you think the campaign ought to apologize about that? I think you have to ask uh, Katrina for about that. But she's about a spokeswoman that. for the campaign. Listen, you know, that's, uh, Katrina decided to say that. That's up to her. If that, and uh, I'd ask her that question. All right, before uh, Paul Manafort, he resigned this week. Before he resigned, you said the campaign uh, was going through campaign expansion, not a shakeup. Are, are you sticking by that now that Manafort is out? Listen, it's not about the staffers, and I'm not here to talk about the staffers, Reverend. People in Ohio don't care about that. We have a strong team right now, a team of somebody like Kellyanne. Kellyanne Conway has been in politics a long time, but also as an outsider. She's a businesswoman. And Steve Bannon, who's a successful businessman and successful in media, we have a strong team, but the key is the candidate. The candidate and the message, again, of national security and the economy. All right, well, let's talk about uh, uh, Bannon. Because some people are saying that Trump is really just laying the groundwork for a media empire yeah. uh, afterward, and that that's why he brought Bannon in. Bannon is bright uh, about news. He's far right, I mean, way to the right, but he knows media. Oh, How do you react to that? That's a conspiracy theory. This campaign... Well, we are talking about this, Bannon if you this, know about conspiracy theories. This campaign theories. is headed by the candidate Donald Trump, who is absolutely focused on winning in November 8th, not for politics, not for himself, but because this country needs him. Is yes, Trump yeah. worried about the polls? No. And the polls are tightening. Why did he talk about the polls every speech until he started losing it? If you look at the recent Pew poll just came out a few days ago, within four points. The LA Times poll within two points consistently. The polls are tightening in, in Ohio and Florida. They're tightening in the battlegrounds as well. Eight, you know, there's about 78 days to go right now, Reverend. So there's plenty of time, plenty of time for the polls to tighten and, and again, for the message to ring true to the voters of national security and the kind of, and also you have to think about who Hillary Clinton is as a candidate. Just the fact that the Clinton Foundation now said that if she's elected, they'll stop taking foreign money. Keep in mind, they made that promise when she became Secretary of State. But well, so we don't know where your candidate's money comes from. We don't even put out his tax return. She put out the financial statement, which is what is required of him. So 104 pages of financial Every candidate since Truman has put out their tax returns. Let me ask you this, though. I have to go here. Uh, we're out of time. He made an appeal twice this week to African-American voters, and he said something to the effect of try something new. But he's not new. I mean, give me his track record in the black community. He took out ads against the Central Park Five. We can't find any black businesses he's ever contracted. He has not gone to any black gatherings, including the churches of the few black ministers that have endorsed him. So support him as something new, what does that mean? Well, first of all, he is somebody that's actually bringing fresh ideas on how to revitalize the inner cities of Chicago, Milwaukee. But what has he done in the cities? He has businesses and he's been out here for decades. Listen, he's a businessman. He's employed plenty of minorities. Who has he done business? He's employed plenty of name minorities. Name one of those black executives. Listen, I'm, not here, I'm not here representing Can you name one I'm, black uh, executive? Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Patton. Absolutely. Lynn Patton. And, and, and her president. title is what? She's executive vice president. Of uh, Donald Trump Jr. She's working around she, 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 She's part of the Trump Organization. If you look at the Trump Organization, it's employed plenty of minorities, plenty of women. But again, at what he's, he's running for president. He's telling you what he'll do. That's, That's why president. he's running for president. The, Demo have a so the Democrats have no track record on this at all. Hillary Clinton has been a lifelong well, Hillary Clinton, Clinton and she's done nothing. a long track record in the black community. But he says, try something new. I don't know if everything new is good. But if a bar is at the oldest step. You're the first one would come from the Trump campaign on a Sunday morning. And uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Yeah, see, that the good part about that was I didn't even have to say anything because if you know anything about uh, Trump, uh, his previous history, 
you know that this guy was basically hanging himself uh, every time he opened his mouth uh, when uh, Al Sharpton asked him a question. Uh, first of all, Katrina Pearson is the national spokesperson for Trump. So when she starts talking about medical issues that she knows nothing about, uh, she is speaking for Donald Trump. But now all of a sudden he says, well, uh, uh, it's, it, it sounds like she was speaking for herself. Now, that does, you, you don't have it both ways. Okay, you don't have it both ways. Uh, and I, honestly, uh, Trump hasn't supported any black businesses. But to be honest with you, if he had, you know, I, I'm, I would give Boris a pass on uh, not knowing about any of them because he's just out there to uh, parrot the, the uh, talking points for Donald Trump. But Al's right. Trump has not supported any black businesses over you know 30, you know 40 years, 50 years that uh, he's quote unquote been in, in the business world. And as far as apologies, I couldn't believe uh, that Al didn't nail him as far as uh, this guy was on the uh, Trump, uh, I'm sorry, on the McCain campaign. And Al should have nailed him on uh, giving um, giving uh, Mr. McCain an apology at the minimum. So, But uh, as I stated, every time these guys, these uh, Trump uh, spokespeople and surrogates open their mouth, they basically just make themselves look stupid. And he is pretty much par for the course. Every time I've seen him on TV, n no facts, uh, basically uh, it's Clinton attacks and basically uh, diverting from anything to do with uh, any negative as far as Trump's concerned.